got a lot of great cells going, so that's nice. Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my Fluid Art channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today I'm doing another clock, so I've got a vinyl record primed. I'm going to be doing a bloom clock today, so I've got my paints mixed up according to the bloom recipe. So the bloom technique was invented by Shelley Carruthers of the Shelley Art channel. She invented the technique great technique, really amazing results that you can get. It uses a different recipe for your pouring medium and your paints. If you want to know how I mix these paints, the link should either be popping up here, I've been having a little trouble with it lately, or you can find it down in the video description if you don't see it popping up right here. My base for a bloom is house paint. So I've got this Glidden Essentials eggshell white house paint. That's going to be my base. And then my colors are pretty much the same colors that I used in the south section of my north, south, east, west painting. So I've got Alizarin Crimson. I have Payne's Gray. I have this metallic copper or something along those lines. Uh, Caribbean. And then I also have some gold, which is a mica pigment. I'm going to be using a black cell activator, which is Amsterdam black, I forget if it's Mars black or lamp black or whatever, it, it, it's a black, Amsterdam black, mixed with Australian Floetrol. That's my cell activator. These colors worked so well together when I tried them before. It gives a very kind of Southwest America feel to it. So that's what I want to do with this clock. All right, let's make a painting. So with my record, I've gone ahead and sprayed it with a primer because it's nice to work on a white surface, especially you don't want the label like showing through your paint. So I've primed that, I've taped it to my spinner, and I've put some tape on the back of this hole so that when I lift it off of the spinner, I don't lose a lot of design through the hole. So I'm going to start by putting some pillow onto the record. Worst part about blooms is the mess you get. Okay, I think that's going to be enough pillow. And house paint is so flowy, it doesn't want to stop. All right, let me set that aside. Tilt it a bit to just stretch it. If your pillow is really, really thick in the middle, when you blow down in, it can kind of like, instead of blowing across, you're like blowing down in and it makes these weird channels. I'm not an expert on the blooms, but I do, I have figured out that you don't want a really, really deep puddle right in the middle, nor do you want it really thick because the design you make in the middle, you want that to be able to stretch. But I think this is pretty good. All right. I'm going to start with the Payne's Gray in the middle. I don't know how much negative space I'm going to want on this. I would love to make a really big bloom that covers the majority of it. I don't know if that's going to work or not. Also, I'm seeing air bubbles, so I'm just going to gently torch each layer as I add it to try to get those air bubbles out. I don't see many in my pillow, so that's good. All right, let's put some gold on. So for a bloom, your paints are much thicker. I'm trying not to make my bloom paints quite as thick as I used to because I think having them a little bit runnier might help me out, but it's still, it's much thicker than a typical acrylic pour paint. All right, a uh, little bit of gold. Then the Elizarin Crimson. I want plenty of that. And then turquoise, well, Caribbean, but it's a turquoise color. I'm gonna do that over the top. 
I love this color. It really makes the color combination pop. Great, and then copper to finish. I have no idea how this is going to blow out. Like I said, I'm not really a bloom expert. There are so many people that like totally focus on the bloom and they really know how to get results. For me, I like to do so many different techniques that I only bloom like one tenth of the time. So I love making blooms, but I'm like, eh, it's always a bit of an experiment for me. And that's okay. You don't need to be a bloom expert in order to have fun with a bloom. Try to make sure that it's centered here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so black cell activator. It works really well with this color combination. I'm gonna put some there in the middle. And then I'm gonna sort of spread it a little bit with my mouth, blow in the center. And then I think I'm gonna use my hair dryer to try to blow it out. And I've seen Lisa Marvin, when she blows with a hair dryer, she doesn't actually use the concentrator like we often do with a Dutch pour. She blows just with the round part, which maybe is more like the force that you would get with a mouth blow. I don't know, I'm gonna try that today. All right, let's spread it out and then we'll blow it. Well, I'm getting lots of great cells and stuff popping up. It's very dark on this side. Lots of the panes gray and the crimson. So I'm wondering if my color combo was too dark, actually. I'm gonna blow a little bit here in the middle just to force up a few cells. It's pretty though, it's very crimson. I didn't realize I had that much of it there. Got a lot of great cells going, so that's nice. All right, I'm going to spin it just a little bit to stretch it, and then I'll see if I wanna modify it at all, add some swirls or something, or if I'm just gonna stretch it. Well, that spun really fast. Well, that is wild, isn't it? It's so dark. So on these edges, we've got turquoise and gold and copper and stuff, but it really, I guess as it blew down in, it picked up those base layers. There was a lot more of those colors than the others, but I thought that because the others were on the top, I don't know. It's really cool. And it totally spread over the whole thing. So there's lots of cells here, and then here it's more wispy, but that's really neat. Let me spin it one more time gently. I don't want to lose too much. Yeah, that's pretty much got all of my white negative space off, and it's just completely bloom. That's crazy. It's neat. I suspect it's going to be, you know, I can see the gold, I can see the copper, so I think it'll probably be shimmery once it's dry. It's just so much redder than I was expecting. It's kind of surprising me. I was expecting more of the copper and the turquoise to stand out. Um, I really love the cells. It looks really nice. I'm tempted to redo it just because I really wanted these colors to be more prominent. But on the other hand, I'm loving it. It looks so cool. So I think I'm gonna leave it. We'll just let the paint decide today what it's going to do. And today the paint said crimson. That's what color it's gonna be. So cool. Let me give you a close up. Okay, so this is really cool. This is not what I expected it to look like, but it's very pretty nonetheless. 
So first of all, that middle, that looks way pinker than it is. It's going to dry much darker than that, but you can see it's almost all the crimson and the Payne's gray, but still so many cool cells. And then this is the section that's wispier, so that must have just blown out with less of the cell activator. Still really pretty though. And then around the edges, this is where we have the brighter colors. The turquoise, the gold, the copper. That's a really nice patch of lacing there. I like that nice little bit of brightness. So really pretty. The blowout went really well. And then here's another little pocket of bright. So it'll be interesting to see exactly how this dries because the Payne's Gray and the Crimson are both going to dry darker than this. So it might be very dark and hard to see the lacing. We'll see. Um, yeah, so let's let's check back when it's dry and see if I have time to paint the numbers and everything before I put this video online. All right, let's see how it looks when it's dry. All right, so here it is. It is all dry, and just as I predicted, it dried very, very dark. Do you see that center? When I get up close, you can see the nice red color. But from a distance, like this is in bad light, it's almost black. From better light, you can see more of that color, but still really dark. So that's too bad, but it's still really pretty. You know, the edges are very bright and colorful. So these clock numbers, I knew that I couldn't do a dark colored clock number on such a dark clock. So I'm considering sort of a turquoise color like this because these numbers, they were black plastic clock numbers that I got on Amazon and I spray painted them white. But I'm wondering about making another set that's the turquoise color. So let me know in the comments, which one do you think would look better on this clock, white or turquoise? So then, Here's the clock motor. If you've never made a clock, you can buy these on Amazon or in craft stores. So this is the motor. It goes through the hole, and then there are different styles of clock hands. So this one, obviously, because it's so dark, having white clock hands would make more sense. And so those hook right onto the motor. And so this will look really cool with the white hands on the nice dark background. And that's why I thought white numbers. White hands, white numbers. But yeah, do let me know because I'm very curious. I have not decided yet if I want the turquoise numbers. These aren't glued down yet. I've just put them in place so that you can see what the clock will look like. And then of course, once this is resined, it's going to be much glossier, shinier. All the metallics will pop more. So should end up pretty cool. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, if you want to see me use this same color palette but get the balance a little bit better, watch my video that's coming up next week, or you can find it at the end of this video. And I use these same colors, and it turns out so much better, so much brighter, more like what I had in mind for this. Thanks again for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye!